good morning everyone so i will be speaking on the role of anti vgfs in pdr uh, just uh, stop you a second uh, will we have a key? yeah it's good morning again so we all know that ppv is the gold standard for management of uh, complications of pdr however in many cases intraoperative hemorrhage may make the uh, surgery long tedious and prevent its successful completion the clots are usually sticky and their removal may create uh, retinal breaks uh, prolonged elevation of iop may hamper cause corneal edema and uh, may even compromise the perfusion of possibly already ischemic optic nerves uh, the excessive endodiathermy may lead to necrosis and shrinkage of retina uh, and as we can see there is a little more bleeding and the clots are sticky and difficult to remove and trying to remove the clot we can see the new bleeders are coming and uh, these bleeders are difficult to stop so this was a case of well done prp so i didn't give prior anti vegf but that proved to be a mistake I had to raise bottle height to control the bleeding. Otherwise, ever since I started using anti-vegfs, I haven't needed to uh, like raise the bottle height. I avoid doing that uh, because of the risk of to optic nerve. Now we are doing ilem peeling. The ilem is very adherent, as we can see, but it helps us dissect the membranes, which are otherwise not possible, and remove the residual hyaloid completely. You can see we have done almost. we uh, peeled the uh, almost all the ilm and it's better controlled now sorry i think still uh, we can see nasally a residual membrane is still present probably left behind the uh, residual clot where ilm maybe wasn't removed so uh, any method that can induce regression of neuscularization reducing intraoperative hemorrhage uh, may facilitate an easier vitreoretinal surgery and we all know that regression of neuroscularization can be achieved by anti vegfs so intravitreal preop anti vegfs uh, uh, have become a popular adjunct and supported by various studies as described below uh, how does it help so it helps by reducing intraoperative bleeding during dissections and segmentation delamination thereby allowing better visibility easier dissections reduce clot formations and all these uh, help uh, uh, like reduce the risk of retinal tears uh, thus reducing the need of silicon oil tamponade recurrent surgeries etc the reduced need of diathermy reduces the cost of retinal ischemia and scarring and smoother surgery leads to less inflammation and better bcva we can see the bleeding is very well controlled it's negligible ilm peeling helps us to dissect the nvcs uh, where the plane of dissection is difficult to found we can see the and uh, this nvc was left behind but uh, with ilm peeling it's it has been isolated we also advocate ilm peeling in uh, Uh, cases of nvcs which are within or uh, near the arcades uh, as first it helps reduce traction on macula and it also uh, prevents development of future erms so this is a case uh, without uh, preop anti vegf and we can see excessive diathermy has led to numerous vascular occlusions and fibrous scarring whereas this case with preop anti vegf has clean retina uh, and without significant vascular compromise so before before discussing the timing we need to know about anti vegf crunch syndrome is the development or progression of trd following intravitreal anti vegf in an i with pdr typically manifest sudden uh, with uh, sudden loss of vision about 3 to 31 days following anti vegf injection the trd develops because uh, uh, due to fibrosis and it's been found that retinal fibrosis in patients with pdr correlates with 
concentrations of connective tissue growth factor, the increase in CTGF levels or redu uh, decrease in VGF levels, that is increased CTGF uh, VGF ratio, uh, may lead to a tilt in the angiofibrotic switch towards fibrosis. And this probably explains increased fibrosis post anti -VGFs. The aggravating factors according to some uh, studies are the use of higher doses of anti vgf injections, especially bevacizumab, severe PDR, especially with pre-existing fibrosis, and absence of prior PRP. This is an example of Crunch syndrome in left eye. The patient had a history of anti vgf elsewhere five weeks before presenting to us. The patient was not fit for surgery then, and the uh, injecting ophthalmologist was of the opinion that maybe anti vgf will keep the disease controlled till the patient is fit for the surgery. So it's important to be aware of the risk of Crohn's syndrome while deciding the time gap between the anti vgf and the surgery. Uh, in a meta-analysis of 26 RCTs, Wang et al. concluded that anti vgf pretreatment at pre-operatory 6 to 14 days showed the best efficacy in terms of improving BCVA reducing duration and, uh, of surgery and incidence of post-op hemorrhages, and it also reduced uh, bleeding to significant extent. Uh, but it's important to note, I think, that uh, eight out, out of these 26 trials were from China alone. So maybe uh, the 6 to 14 days period is not what we follow here. These are the detailed uh, uh, study results in tabulated form. Uh, as per our personal experience, um, we may wait for a few weeks in presence of non-resolving vitreous hemorrhage or uh, recurrent vitreous hemorrhages uh, without any significant traction. But for TRDs, it's safer to operate within two to seven days. Yes, the most important thing is uh, to get surgical fitness before giving anti vgf because that sometimes creates problems. Many times general ophthalmologists inject and refer to via surgeons and uh, the patient is not fit for surgery and uh, that uh, becomes a trouble for us. We can see bleeding, there is little bit of bleeding and this is pre uh, post op one day like uh, the anti vgf was given one day before only. There is some bleeding but still it's uh, not interfering with our segmentations and deliminations we are able to peel the membrane even without significant trouble and the result was good. So in the end, uh, yeah, I also prefer repeat anti vgf at the end of surgery as it reduces early post of vitreous hemorrhage, reduces inflammation, gives better media clarity, reduces DME and gives better visual outcome with happier patients. So uh, thanks. Thank you, Dr. Ajay. Excellent. Extensively covered all relevant points uh, related to pre-operative anti-VEGF. So most of us would uh, are like following your approach only that anti-VEGF before almost all diabetic surgeries. So let me ask you, when do you don't give uh, anti-VEGF before your PDR surgeries? What are the cases? Like uh, earlier, I avoided anti-VEGF in presence of uh, uh, like well done PRP and if I saw like scars like whitish scars mainly not uh, too vascular but right now if i'm sure the patient is fit for surgery i even prefer giving anti vgf before surgery it's always helpful it further reduces uh, the bleeding the, and i uh, always inject at the end of surgery too many are not injecting but this is my personal opinion because it i've seen the chances of post uh, surgery vitreous hemorrhage in early post operative at least like sometimes we see the media is not clear for some days uh, after surgery and uh, rarely I uh, like I had to go in again and like inject silicone oil when I didn't inject anti vgf at the end. So these cases have reduced significantly in my practice like negligible. Okay. In last uh, five to seven years I uh, like injected silicone oil in only one patient. Okay, oh, PDR. Thank you. So that's maybe I am dealing with less complex cases, but yeah, still. Yeah, uh, Dr. Reddy, your experience uh, like uh, on this, uh, uh, do you still go ahead and inject uh, 
प्री ऑपरेटिव एंटी वेज एफ इफ यू सी अ रिग्रेस रेटनोपैथी एंड यू और लाइक यू चूज योर केसेस चूज सेलेक्टिवली द केसेस एंड इन केस ऑफ अल्ट्रासाउंड वेन आई वॉट आई डोंट इंजेक्ट वेन आई डोंट सी आई डोंट सी ओनली वेन आई देर इज टी आर डी इज एक्टिव एन वी देर एनी रिग्रेस प्योरली फाइब्रस प्रोलिफरेशन आई डोंट सी एनी पॉइंट इन गिविंग सो सेलेक्टिवली इफ यू सी इवन इन विट्रस एमरेज इफ आई एम नॉट सींग वॉट इज देर एट द बैंड आई एम नॉट आई डोंट इंजेक्ट एंटी वेज ऑफ एंड डूज इंजेक्शन ओनली वेन आई सी टी आर डी विद एक्टिव न्यू वेजल्स चल शो Uh, that are likely to be then we give. and if there is pure fibrous element then again we don't give anti vegf before uh, such quick question words on the choice of anti vegf uh it's now it's ranibizumab because uh, of problems with avastin and these molecules but earlier i used to give bevacizumab only pre op uh, that's 1.25 mg and intra op wisely you give uh, used to give double the dose uh, like at the end of surgery because of early wash out so many people i saw in uretna yeah. and so i think if you are uh, like uh, let's say if you are uh, operating 7 days after anti vegf then also you will prefer to give a post uh, in post operative anti uh, uh, vegf yeah i prefer because of uh, because in diabetics uh, either you give trimsulon at the end of surgery i avoid that because of risk of raised iop had to face in some patient so i prefer giving anti repeat anti vegf only okay fine great so i think in interest so of time uh, inflammation also and that's like I'm, yeah fair uh, point i especially if you see macular edema then i think yeah, it's definitely it